What's up guys, this is a new channel named Tex Why I'm Broke. Kind of fits me better as I'm wasting my own money to test out new products and hopefully provide you with some insight. In this video, I will be comparing the Asus ZenBook Duo and the Lenovo YogaBook 9i, as well as answering some frequent questions for those with commitment issues, whether personal or digital, and additionally running some performance tests. I hope to fulfill those unanswered questions, keeping you awake at night and daydreaming about these beautiful 3K dual displays. I'm wondering what secrets these furious keyboards endured during late night typing and whether they suffer from separation anxiety, not being physically connected to their device like a baby witnessing an exposed breast because baby is stuck in crib watching their parents in initial production process of producing a sibling. Oh yeah, daddy. The ZenBook Duo does have superior specs available as seen. Due to the size and thin profile of the YogaBook 9i, it is limited to the Core Ultra 7 processor which is also the reason I believe the Lenovo decided to stick with the outdated Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics. The Duo is slightly thicker and obviously bigger to accommodate the keyboard and the larger display. With its compact size, the YogaBook does come only with three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, while the Duo includes two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, a full HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a full USB-A port making it a better portability option for most. Uh, additionally, the keyboard itself has a USB-C port for charging when not attached to the laptop directly. Both of these displays are beautiful at 3K. However, the Duo does offer a slightly brighter display and a refresh rate of 120 Hertz, which is adjustable on both displays compared to the max 60 Hertz on the YogaBook. The Duo can lay completely flat on a surface with 180 degrees max opening capability, while the Yoga Book can still open a full 360 degrees and making tent mode a usable option. The keyboard easily pulls off the Duo to reveal the second display, which stays off until the keyboard is removed and quickly adjusts to the dual display mode. The Duo uses a standard two hinge mechanism while the Yoga Book's hinge extends across the whole device, also incorporating the speakers directly inside the hinge itself. Both of these hinges are very sturdy and hold any position without any problem. The Duo's keyboard integrates into the laptop, while the Yoga Book uses a standalone keyboard. Even though the Duo keyboard is integrated, it is still slightly slimmer than the Yoga Book 9i keyboard. Both have a USB C port. For charging and connectivity, feel is premium and sturdy on both of them. The Yoga Books keyboard has two rubber strips on the bottom to prevent sliding, while the Duo keyboard has a smooth rubbery texture on the bottom to prevent any scratches on the screen and to prevent sliding. The Duo keyboard has a 1.4 millimeter key travel and feels smooth to the touch versus the 1.3 millimeter key travel on the Yoga Book with the more hard plasticky feel personally making the typing experience feel a little bit better on the dual keyboard. The dual keyboard is an all-in-one with an integrated trackpad, like on most laptops, whereas the Yoga Book includes a separate mouse, which can be more beneficial for ease of use, but at the cost of portability. Now here's the main thing that sets these two two-in-ones apart. The dual keyboard seamlessly integrates onto the secondary display and is held in place by magnets, while the YogaBook keyboard can sit on the secondary display and activate additional features on the screen to go along with it. Also kept in place with strong magnets. That as far as it goes with the YogaBook. The Duo seamlessly integrates the keyboard and acts just like any ordinary laptop, making it a more portable dual display laptop, not having to carry around any additional accessories. Now just to go back on the hinge a bit, as a reviewer posted on Amazon stating the hinge design is flawed and the case can separate when opening the device which is totally false and over-exaggerated. These hinges are designed to open 180 degrees and trying to push them purposely beyond that point will obviously cause pressure points just like any mechanism pushed beyond its limits. As seen, you have to forcefully push to cause any case movement. Now going back to the yoga book, as stated, you can see that the keyboard does not integrate directly into the device and it must be stored separately. Okay, so let's do a quick typing test. So. Both keyboards are connected via Bluetooth and see if there's any delays in typing. All right, so typing with the dual keyboard, it's very responsive with zero delays and feels good on your fingers. So now we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the yoga book.
Mother, I just want to type. All right, now that I'm through with all that nonsense, the Yoga Book keyboard is doing just as good with zero delays, but has a little harder feel on the keys as they do feel a little more plasticky compared to the smooth feeling on the dual keyboard. The Yoga Book keyboard does offer a better battery life. As I found, the dual keyboard drains fairly quickly with consistent typing less than about three hours of regular use compared to about five hours with the Yoga Book keyboard. Again, let's look at the 360 hinge capabilities on the Yoga Book, which might make it a more appealing option to some users depending on their needs. Both of these devices offer a premium aluminum casing design with a great feel on both laptops. As seen, the Duo doesn't appear to show as many fingerprints as the Yoga Book, which might just be the color itself, which is still better than some other devices which clearly show more visible fingerprints. Now on to the kickstands. The Duo has an all-metal sturdy built-in kickstand with the multiple angles building onto the already high portability profile. The Yoga Book, however, does not have a built-in kickstand and again requires another accessory to offer different setup angles. The included stand, which also acts as the keyboard case and stylus holder, forms into a stand which the Yoga Book then sits into. Unfortunately, this limits the angles available for the Yoga Book. This is definitely a great move in the right direction for both companies, which may have an appeal for a different type of audience. These kickstands are obviously used to prop the screens up in order to get both screens viewable just like you would on a normal laptop. Now as you can see here, the keyboards attach magnetically to the stand as well, while the Duo just sits up against the device. The versatility and design offer a wide range of users the option to set up either device to their likings. The Duo kickstand also works supporting both screens being vertical if you wanted a taller desktop screen experience, and additionally the Yoga Book can do the same just by flipping it onto the stand. Okay, now let's move on to the stylus, which is also included with both laptops. Included with the Duo is the Asus Pen 2.0 with 4096 level pressure sensitivity. It has a USB charging port, which is revealed by pulling on the top portion of the pen. The Yoga Book comes with the standard Lenovo Digital Pen 4, according to the description, but when I open the battery compartment, it says Digital Pen 3. It also has 4096 level pressure points, but does not have charging capabilities and uses a standard AAA battery. All right, so looking at both of these, the design on the Duo pen is obviously superior because they included a higher end model pen, which came with additional tips as well and has three available buttons, whereas the Yoga Book Stylus only has two buttons, which is kind of disappointing considering how much more the Yoga Book costs. I would expect to get their higher end model pens just like you do with their other laptops. All right, so another question that was asked is the response time it takes mounting and unmounting the keyboard. First, I'll attach the keyboard on the laptop while it's going through some moderate tasks, which as you can see, took only about five seconds, which is pretty good in my opinion. And again, unmounting the keyboard here took exactly another five seconds and is immediately available for use after unmounting. So let's open up some more demanding tasks here and see if there's any difference in the response time. Okay, so we have a bunch of different programs open here, including video pad editing software, see if there's any difference. And again, as you can see, this took exactly five seconds from the time the keyboard was fully mounted. And again, here unmounting is another five seconds as this seems to be the standard time, which is very consistent.
Okay, so these laptops have been running for some time now doing all these different tests. I have the fan set on the performance mode on the Duo. So feeling under the Duo, it's definitely warm like you would expect it to be, but not to a point where I would be concerned. So also let's check out the lower screen, which here it also feels slightly warm, but not uncomfortable to the touch. So I guess time will tell whether the lower screen will be affected being exposed to slightly higher temperatures than a normal laptop would. All right, so next, let's do a quick speaker test on the laptop, see what we get. Laptops, can I get a hoya? Oh yeah? Wow, they both definitely gave me a great haul, yeah. The speaker sounds great on both of these. No settings were adjusted. This is all stock. Although the Yoga Book does sound slightly better, I feel like it has more bass and provides a stronger tone overall. Let's take another quick listen here. All right, so those speakers definitely sound great. All right, so another question I had was, does the Duo support connecting two additional displays on top of the Duo's displays already being on? Well, as you can see here, I have four total displays, one connected via USB-C hub, and the other one's connected directly to the HDMI port on the laptop. All four work flawlessly, thanks to the upgraded graphics and the Ultra Core 9 processor. Okay, now for some performance testing. Here I have additionally an Asus ZenBook Flip 15 with a dedicated GPU and a Surface Book 3 which has the same dedicated GPU as the Flip. And we'll see how they perform compared to the two New Year devices with integrated graphics cards. I'm doing a basic benchmark testing using narrow score and all four laptops are set to the highest performance settings. So the ZenBook Flip 15 does have a newer i7 processor than the actual Surface Book 3. So I would at least expect that one to have a little bit better results. All four of the laptops do have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And as mentioned previously, the Yoga Book uses the older integrated Intel Iris XE graphics card, which I would expect to have the lowest rating of the four laptops here. So I'm curious to see if the Duo's new integrated graphics card performed better than the average dedicated GPUs on the two devices we have here. Your time is very important to me. Please continue to hold and the next available results page will be with you shortly. All right, thank you for holding. Wow, as you can see, the Duo outperformed all three laptops overall, but as expected, the dedicated GPU cards on the ZenBook Flip and the Surface Book 3 performed slightly better than the Duo, but the dedicated MPU cards definitely made a difference for the AI tasks. As you can see, both the Duo and the Yoga Book performed better in that aspect. The upgraded Core Ultra 7 and the Ultra 9 processor performed better with a significant performance boost on the Ultra 9 processor that's in the Duo. Although the Yoga Book's outdated graphics fell slightly short. All right, guys. So what we got here, we got the ZenBook Flip, ZenBook Duo, and then the Yoga Book Flip. So let's run some real world tests and see how they perform, you know, compared to each other. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a video export so this is very uh, task demanding. Uh, we'll see how each of these do and how long it takes them to export a 4K video. 
So this is the same video for each of them, 4K setting, 60 frames per second. Uh, see what we get here. All right, so we have that running. So there's a bunch of different things going on in the background. I have multiple programs, multiple tasks running. And let's just compare what we got here. So we'll slide this aside. That's our little status bar. So right now, the yoga book is using 100% of the CPU. Uh, let's get a little close up. All right, so here's the yoga book. So 100% of the CPU usage right now, uh, about 48% of the memory. And you can see GPU is kind of all over the place. I'd say average of 60%. Uh, moving on over to the yoga book. Let's move this out of the way. Uh, you can see much better results, only using about 28% of the CPU over about 30, 40, uh, average of 30%. Memory about 52%. Um, so obviously performing much better than the yoga book as far as that aspect goes. Now moving over to the ZenBook Flip 15, we were at about, I'd say average of 65% CPU memory it's using about 55 percent um so as you can see just between the three the duo is performing much better as far as being uh task oriented all three of them are running youtube running the weather channel radar obviously this one only has one screen so that's all running in the background you can see that. And the radar there. So we'll get this back up. So we'll keep an eye on the timer and see how long that's going to take there. All right, so we'll check in here again. So you can see the dual is right at 97%, 98. And it's just about done. And the duo is done. The Yoboga book, we're only at 20%. The flip, surprisingly, only at 9.5%. So I guess even with the dedicated graphics card, the CPU still appears to be performing slightly better on the Yoga book. See how long those two take. So we're going on nine minutes here, and these two are still lagging way behind. Duo's been done. Let me, we're going to go double check just to make sure. Performance settings should be set. And yes, as you can see, power can't be on while high performance power plan is used. So we are in high performance mode there. Let's double check the yoga book. Still doing slightly better than the flip. But just so you can see that these are in performance mode. So there you go. High performance mode in use. So we are about... Yeah, we're going on 10 minutes, and we're at 40%. Over here, we're only at 14. Wow. Okay. All right, so the yoga book is done here, and we're looking at exactly, wow, 20 minutes. So we have the flip is still going. And that is only at 31%. So we're going to call it quits here on the flip. So that's a fail. So definitely wouldn't recommend using the flip for video files. But 
yoga book, 20 minutes, that's still, that's still a good amount of time. Okay, well, that does it for this comparison video. I've learned a lot myself regarding these two beautiful devices these past couple weeks. And with personal use, I have no second thoughts that the ZenBook Duo is far superior in performance and overall portability. The Duo has outdone older devices with dedicated graphics cards, which I initially believed would beat the Duo, but it has proved me wrong. The Yoga Book has also performed well and really shows the new Intel Core Ultra processor is definitely a performance improvement over the previous generation i7 processors. And the additional of NPUs it really helps these devices outperform older devices, even though they have integrated graphics. The Intel integrated art graphics is a very noticeable improvement over the Iris XE graphics and the shows in these tests. If you have any other questions regarding these devices, please comment below. I hope I answered some of your questions regarding these devices. Please like and subscribe. I look forward to making more videos in the coming weeks. Thank you. The links for both of these devices will be posted in the description.